Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and More. So today's topic in prosthodontics is Kennedy's classification of edangular space and Apple Gates rule. So it's a very common question and it's a simple one. There are many classifications put forward to classify the edangular space but the most accepted one is Kennedy's classification. He proposed his classification in 1923. So it gives a positional picture of the teeth present, but little information of the exact number of teeth absent or present. He basically pointed out the hedangeles space numbers, not the number of teeth absent or present. So moving on the class one so he classified into four one two three and four so the Kennedy's classification one from the picture itself it's very clear the missing teeth on bilateral side that is the most posterior areas are missing so it is the missing some or all of the teeth on both sides in a single arch and there are no teeth posterior to posterior to the edangulus area. So this is the most posterior area. There is no teeth posterior to this area. That is class one. And class two. It is a unilateral edangulus area. That is only one side the teeth are absent. And there is no teeth posterior to this. So it is also known as unilateral distal extension okay and the class 3 it is unilateral edangulus area with natural teeth anterior and posterior to it so it is also known as tooth bone tooth bone because it is supported by the remaining natural teeth only and the class 4 it is a single but you bilateral which is crossing the midline and this edangulus area anterior to the remaining natural teeth okay so the remaining natural teeth are at the posterior side so the anterior bilateral area which is crossing the midline which is also known as anterior extension And there is no modification for this. So the modification is nothing but the number of edangulus space present. Suppose class 1. We will take the class 1 and there is missing tooth like this. So here the two teeth are missing, here one teeth are missing. So 1, 2 irrespective of the number of teeth. So Kennedy was highlighting only the edangulus space not the numbers of teeth so one space and two space so this is class one modification two if it was just like this it is missing only at this point only this tooth is missing it will become class one modification one even if it is missing like this or missing like this it will be still class one modification number one because it is not the number of teeth it is a number of spaces that matters okay so that is class 1 class 2 class 3 and class 4 and the modification it is a number of edangular space so again in class 2 also modification will be there if it is like this it will be class 2 modification 1 if it is like this class 2 modification 2 class 2 modification 3 so it depends on the number of edangular space but there is no modification in class 4 now let's move on to Applegate's rule. So Applegate's rule, there are eight uh, rules are there. So it is to uh, understand the Kennedy's classification better and also to avoid the confusion. The first rule is classification should follow rather than proceed extraction that might alter the original classification. Means always we should do the extraction prior to the classification. Because if you are seeing a person's upper arch like this, this is class 3 edangular space. 
okay so and we are planning the treatment according to this classification and after a period of time we are uh, finding out that the bone support is lesser for this remaining one tooth and we are going to extract this also now this becomes class 2 okay but our treatment was initially based on the class 3 so in order to avoid the confusion in treatment plan also classification we should first do the extraction then go for classification that is why it is saying the classification should follow rather than proceed extraction that might alter the original classification that is rule number one okay now rule number two if third molar is missing and not to be replaced it is not considered in the classification suppose we have third molars so central lateral canine premolars and third molars okay if this third molar is missing and we are not uh, planning to replace it it is not considered in the classification okay that is the second rule the third rule if the third molar is present and is to be used an abutment it is considered in the classification in case if you are planning to use this as abutment we need to consider it in the classification and the rule number four so three is the third molar is present two is if it is not present the fourth rule is if the second molar is missing and is not to be replaced it is not considered in the classification so the second molar is missing and we are not planning to replace it it is not considered in the classification and rule number five rule number five is the most posterior edangulus area or areas always determine the classification so the most posterior area so if you have a, a posterior edangulus area here so this is one area okay and we have one area here and we have one more edangulus area here so we need to consider only this one okay so this will be class 2 Kennedy's class 2 with modification number 2 so this is Kennedy's class 2 class 2 modification 2 we are not considering this edangulus area or this edangulus area we are considering the most posterior edangulus area and the remaining edangulus areas will be the modification okay and the sixth one is the edangulus area other than the most posterior one which determine the classification are referred as modifications which we already talked about the most posterior one is considered for the Kennedy's classification and the remaining edangulus areas considered as modification that is a rule number six and rule number seven the extent of modification is not considered only the number of edangulus areas are considered that is if we have a missing tooth suppose if we have missing tooth one two three four that is not considered it is just considered as a one edangulus space here only one tooth is missing again it is considered as edangulus space just one edangulus space here four teeth missing again the second edangulus space not the number of teeth okay it is a space just the space is considered as one not the number of teeth that is a rule number seven and the rule number eight the last rule is there can be no modification in class four because any additional edangulus space will definitely be posterior to it and will determine the classification suppose let's take if we have a modification if we have a edangulus space here so what will happen so this will be class three class three kennedy's class three modification one so we cannot have any modification in class 4 because if there is a modification if there is a edangulus space it will become class 3 modification 1 or modification 2 so there will not be any modification possible in class 4 so that is the apple gates uh, rule 8 rules so i'll uh, recap once again the first one is classification should follow rather than proceed extraction that might alter the original classification rule number two if the third molar is missing and not to be replaced it is not considered rule number three if the third molar is present and is considered 
and is you keeping it as an abutment it is considered rule number four if the second molar is missing and it is not to be replaced it is not considered in classification rule number five the most posterior edangelous area is considered or determine the classification and edangelous area that is rule number six edangelous area other than the posterior will be considered as a modification and the seventh one only the extent of modification is uh, extent of modification is not considered only the number of edangelous areas that is the number of missing teeth in the modification space is not considered only the number of edangelous spaces are considered and the rule number eight the last one is there is no modification possible for class four and applegate has a modification in 1960 okay so uh, applegate modified the classification on the condition of abutment to include two or more additional groups that is class 5 class 5 it is a modification that is a uh, a change in the class 3 that is which is edangelous area bounded anteriorly and posteriorly by the natural teeth so this is almost like class 3 but what is the change in which the anterior abutment is not suitable for support so this is the anterior abutment abutment is uh, the supporting tooth okay where we attach our uh, clasp or any apparatus attaching apparatus so the anterior abutment is not suitable for support so it is basically a class 3 where the anterior abutment cannot be used as an abutment so this is Apple Gates 1960 modification which is known as the class 5 and one more we have that is class 6 the class 6 is nothing but edangelous area in which the teeth adjacent to the space are capable of so again the class 3 one where the teeth adjacent that is the abutment teeth are capable of total support of the required processes so we can take support only from this adjacent tooth because these teeth are very capable we don't need any tissue support mostly this denture uh, like rpds are mostly tooth and tissue supported it will take support from both the tooth and also the tissue but this case the classics where the processes can take the support from the tooth itself or we can say the tooth can give the support for the entire processes in such case we can call it as the class 6 so this is a separate group that is apple gates modified in 1960 so we can say we have six classification basically one two three four and five and six five and six are again a little change in class 3 5 is where the anterior abutment is not suitable class 6 where the abutments are enough to give the total support that is tissue support is not required the tooth itself can give support and we have eight apple gates rule so that's all about kennedy's classification and apple gates rule so i'll come up with a new topic in process thank you